May grace and peace from the Father God and our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of us here. My job now is to throw light on the theme of the Congress. The theme is living to impact generations through the Holy Spirit. Living to impact generations through the Holy Spirit. And to begin with, I would like us to read Psalm 22, verses 30 and 31. Psalm 22, verses 30 and 31. First from the New Living Translation. Our children will also serve him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. Amen. And from the Message Bible, the Message Bible, our children and their children will get in on this as the word is passed along from parent to child. Babies not yet conceived will hear the good news that God does what he says. Amen. Basically, Psalm 22 talks about the coming of the Messiah, his suffering and his life, and the work that he would do. And then the work that would bring redemption to humanity. And then continues to say that the work will be passed on from one generation to another. And that is what we are experiencing now. Our Lord Jesus Christ came down on earth here for about 33 and a half years. And he ministered for only about three and a half years. Yet, his work continues to impact generations. And it is because of what he has done, that is why we are here. He therefore lived to impact generations. And how can we live to impact generations? I'm only going to give three facts on it. The first is that live a meaningful life. I must live a meaningful life and you must live a meaningful life. Living a meaningful life implies that you must choose what you want to do and what you don't want to do. You must make the right choices in life. Life is full of choices. Where you want to go, what you want to do, what you want to study. So if you do not resolve in your heart to do the right thing, you may not live a meaningful life. There was this young man who was taken captive to Babylon. And when he went there, he had the opportunity to be in the palace and be trained. He had the opportunity to enjoy himself with alcohol, wine, smoke, and if it had been our days, drugs. But he resolved in his heart not to do anything against his God. He decided to do the right thing, to make the right choice in order that his life would impact generations. And the Bible says that, but Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. What choices are you making? You can choose not to study. You can choose to take drugs. You can choose to take alcohol. You can choose to smoke whatever you want to smoke. By then, you are determining your own life and your impact on earth here. So once you make the right choice, then your life is going to be attractive and others will like to follow what you have done, living a meaningful life. Second, if you want to impact others, you must be empowered with the Holy Spirit. You cannot actually live a meaningful life without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. The human nature is so depraved, so vulnerable, so weak that if you leave it on its own, it will make the wrong choice. It will make the wrong choice. That is the human nature. Sometimes if I examine the dealings of human beings, I say, Lord, have mercy on us. You know, we don't like killing. 
but we fantasize on killing, on films, watching people who are killing others. Then you sit down and laugh. That is the human nature. Human nature. So depraved. Once I was in Europe, and one TV station conducted a survey on the best personality on the TV show. And the person that the people chose was the one who was very humorous, but he then could go on telly almost naked, only trying to cover the private part, but showing other parts. He was the one who was chosen. That is the choice of the human nature. When you want to see what the human nature wants, you can sometimes see it during secret balloting, voting. That is where you see the power of the old nature. Outwardly, people will pretend that we like this. We desire this. But secretly, they desire something evil. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we can't make it. We need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will cause you to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. And once you acknowledge Jesus and your, as your Lord and personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. So the Holy Spirit is a person. He's a person. You need, sometimes we associate him with dove, we associate him with wind, with fire. All of these things are good. But Jesus said that. And I will ask the Father. And he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The word cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. So the, the, the Holy Spirit is Christ in you. Therefore, Paul says that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Once you are empowered with the Holy Spirit, then he would help you to overcome the devil. He will help you to overcome the promptings of the flesh and the desires of this world. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't. Therefore, to live to impact others, you need to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. And finally, for you to be able to impart others, you must attract your neighbors. Holy Spirit living, godly living attracts people from all circles. Although sometimes they may appear to be against you, inwardly they cherish you. And they know that you've got something that they haven't got. So if you begin to live a different life, a godly life, a spirit-filled life, then people begin to find out, why is this person not doing what I'm doing? What has enabled him to stop this habit, perhaps of smoking, taking alcohol, chasing women or men? What has enabled him to do that? What has made him successful? You become attractive and they begin to find why you are attractive. And once you are able to attract your wife, your husband, your children, your neighbor, then they would like to get what you have got. And once they get what you have got, then you have imparted them. So if you are able to impart them, then they will also tell others about what they have received. And they will impart them. So you impart your wife, your wife imparts her friend, you impart your children, your children impart their friend, and then they carry on imparting others. This is what we meant by imparting generations. They will continue to impart other people. So you are living to impart generations through the Holy Spirit. To draw the conclusion, the Congress has been planned in such a way as to let you encounter the Holy Spirit so that you will see a difference in your life that will attract others to find out the reason for the change in your life. The planners had the theme of living to impart generations to the Holy Spirit in mind when the programs were being planned. So the programs have been drafted in such a way as to help you achieve our aim. 
The tracks have been planned to handle topics that will assist you live to impact others. You must endeavor to attend one each day. The speakers are going to touch your very life in such a way as to cause you know Christ in a new way through the power of the Holy Spirit. The worship and prayer sessions will help you deepen your spiritual life. Next Generation Youth Network has been given special day, that is Saturday. Do not miss it. About 5,000 children will join us on Saturday. We need to impact them and expect them to impact us through their presence and their songs. You must be imparted to impart someone here. Make new friends. Above all, you must expect to leave this Congress as someone who has encountered the invisible 